Okay, so um, let's start. I think my, my screen is uh, sharing now, it's being shared now. So with the concept of machine learning. Now, we all know artificial intelligence. We've heard a lot about artificial intelligence. That's popularly known as the AI. This is an emerging technology. Over the past few years, it has actually greatly evolved in the IT world. And a lot of companies, a lot of systems are integrating in their system. Now, how does this AI being built um, with the likes of chat GPT and so on, all these autobots answering questions and so on and so forth, how are they being built? Now, in artificial intelligence, the core thing you need is data. Without data, you can build an artificial intelligence model. Every artificial intelligence model you build is actually based on a data. So as a data scientist, what can you do with your data to actually help to actually help you to build a model? Now um, I'm coming a minute. Right, let's proceed. So with your data, it's a data scientist with your data, you can train and bring out a model out of that data. Now, let's take some few examples. For example, suggestions, article suggestions, movie recommendations. So sometimes you, you, you actually visit um, a streaming site that has the HBO Max or um, Netflix will be streaming then you see recommendation popping up now how will you be able to determine how were they able to determine okay this viewer or this person actually likes this sort of movies based on um, um, the number of times you actually pursue a particular genre. So wherever you visit, you open your Netflix account, maybe you search for action movies. As you progressively search for the action movies, it is gathering your data. Now, after it, it knows that, okay, this person, actually when he or she comes, goes directly for action movies. Therefore, if any new action movie pops up, for we to keep our customer or for we to keep him subscribing to our service, we will show him the latest action movies. So you see, by the end of the day, they will win you because you, 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 you actually are into action movies and you log in and they just pop up for you. You check, it's a new action movie, very uh, a thrilling one. You can actually um, reject it. All these are AI. Now, on Facebook, those on, those on Facebook, you open you, you you open your account or you log in your account, you'll be seeing article suggestions. You'll find out that these article suggestions are your interest and you are, in fact, 80% likely to click on that particular article. All these are AI suggestions. Right, we have a whole lot. We have Alexa for Amazon. We have Siri 
for Apple a whole lot. Now, those who use um, the, these music streaming platforms, when maybe when whenever you log into your account, you, you search for, um, let's say, country music. So you log in, you see pop up country, new country music released, you see it. All these are AI um, suggestions. They are models being trained by data, which are you able to mimic what you like and help these tech giants to actually um, and promote their contents and their marketing, um, um, improve their marketing revenues. Now, what exactly is machine learning? At the end of today's class, it's my objective that you will be able to explain machine learning to at least a five-year-old child, give an example, let a, let a person actually understand the whole concept of machine learning so that maybe someday you want to build a model with your data, you know how to go about it in machine learning. Now, machine learning is a core sub-area of artificial intelligence. Machine learning, in fact, learn from experience like humans do without directly programming, right? We all know um, for you to build robust systems, you need to sit down and program. Other, other, other options, you can use these um, no-code platforms and so on and so forth, but, but they all come with coding. Now, in machine learning, you don't necessarily need to sit down and program. All what you need to do, this AI, 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 they don't necessarily need you to sit down and program. All what you need to do is to train your model with the data you have and the model will become intelligent. They actually learn from this model they learn experiences from this data you will show them. Then, in progressively, they will be able to mimic the nature of the data in the real world or real life applications. Let's quickly move to an example. As an example, will make you understand it more. Now, we want to build a chatbot whereby um, our we. we Let's say we have a company and the company we are short of staffs which can actually respond to to users for us then we build an ai model a chatbot we are going to train this chatbot with questions likely questions the individual most users will come and ask so let's say um most users will say hello or hi um, I'm having a challenge with logging or I'm having a challenge with signing up. These are most common challenges. Then we actually feed our model with these questions and feed them with answers. So the, if you realize, those of you who have been chatting with chatbots, we have chatbot there. Now, when you open a chatbot and you are, when you say hello, you quickly reply and Maybe today you ask it hello. Tomorrow, the same reply to give you today, it will be the same reply given to you tomorrow or the next week or till the model is changed. Because it is trained in a way that you, that it's supposed to answer as a particular question of which it is, it is expected of you to ask. Here, it is learning from a data that has been given to it. Now let's pick something here. At a high level, machine learning is the ability to adapt to new data independently and through iterations. Applications learn from previous computations and transactions use 
pattern recognition to produce reliable and informed results. How does machine learning work? In what machine learning work in a way of you training your data. So the machine learning process starts from here. It starts by inputting the training data. So maybe you have a data set. You have a data set. Um, I will, after today's class, I, I will actually um, send you a link in the course of the week to download data sets so that you can have a look at it, what how a data set look like. Right, now start with inputting training data into selected algorithm. Now this training data being known or unknown data to develop the final machine learning algorithm. The type of training data input does impact the algorithm and that concept will be covered further in fact, in, in, very soon. New input data is fed into the machine learning algorithm to test whether the algorithm works correctly. The prediction and results are then checked against each other. Now we will feed in our data. We will allow it to, to compute. There is one thing I want you to always remember. In computing, everything you do follows an algorithm. As the last time I defined an algorithm is the step-by-step -step way of solving a problem. For example, you want to pick something in your bedroom, but the tent is on your bed. For you to get to your bed, you need a key to open your main door. So you open your main door, you enter, you walk to the bed, and you pick the item. The process you pass through to get to the item on your bed is termed as algorithm. Now, algorithm is used. There are so many types of algorithm which is used in machine learning or um, training our data. You have your data. The first step you do is inputting the training data you have. Then you select an algorithm which is going to use to train the data. We have so many types of the algorithm. We will take a look at um, the types of algorithm in our subsequent slides. Please, any questions so far? Right, let's move on. Now, what are the different types of machine learning? We have different types of machine learning. Today, what we will actually basically look at, or what as a data scientist, we will more importantly look at, is the supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. In fact, machine learning is very complex. So that's why it's being divided. Now quickly, let's touch the supervised machine learning. Please, if you don't understand anything, you draw my attention. I want to um, increase the size so that you can see from my screen. So supervised, that's the first one, the supervised machine learning. Now, in supervised machine learning, we use known or labeled data for training. Now, this data is known. Therefore, it is termed as a supervised. What do we mean by known? Okay. The input data goes through the machine learning algorithm and used to train the model. Once the model is trained based on the known data, you can use unknown data into the model and get a new response. Right. Now, let's look at an example here. You understand it more with this example. Can you take a, a look at the diagram here? Let me try and increase it.
Okay. Supervised learning. You can see from my far left where my mouse is, you can see some red fruits, which is um, apple, as you can see. Now, that is our known data. Here, we are trying to build a model or an AI that can actually identify the fruits, apple. Here, we are more specific. Please note the difference here. Here, we are more specific with the model. We are saying we are building a model that can actually identify the fruit, apple. No other fruit but apple. Now, here, meaning we know our data, meaning we know our data we are feeding our model. That's why it is termed a supervised learning. In supervised learning, you know your data you are feeding with your model. So here, the known data here is Apple. Then we, we actually input the data into the algorithm. The algorithm processes the data, learn from the data. Now, the next time we give a picture of a fruit to our model, it will be able to tell either this fruit is an apple or it's not. Please note the difference here. In supervised learning, we know the data. We know we are building a model that can be, or we are building artificial intelligence that can be able to actually differentiate apple from any um any fruit. Now, the data we gave to our model, we used to train is an apple. Apple picture, apple video, everything apple. Now, we're using known data to feed our system, makes our whole model or type of machine learning called a supervised one because we know the data we are feeding. We are feeding apple to our algorithm. Here we've chosen an algorithm to, after the apple, the next diagram there is the algorithm. Now the algorithm takes in the apple. The next year you see a bright bulb. Bright bulb means it is processing the apple, it is processing, learning from it, drawing patterns in it. Now when you input the data into the model, it analyzes it, draw patterns. So the last time I explained the model of um, um, facial recognition and, and hand recognition. Most, uh, those of us who has our phones or our laptops or our devices, which um, 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 requires us to actually scan our fingerprint or our face or something to unlock. I explained last time that before you can set your phone like that, you have to actually go to settings. You first adjust your face to your camera. It takes it to record the data. The data record, you see, it is not actually taking the picture. It's actually taking some patterns on your finger. Then when you do it, it will tell you do it again. It will tell you do it again till you are done. To till it's done, it will they will tell you okay, it's complete. Now when it's complete, it's going to store the data. When the data is stored, fine, it's created. The next time you are trying to log into your device, it will tell you to bring your fingerprint. Now when you put your fingerprint, it is going to scan. Is going to take a new data from your fingerprint and compare it with the older data. When it compares with the older data and it's the same, it will give you access to your phone to use. Now, when it compares it and it's not the same, it will deny you access to the device. That's how someone with a different fingerprint can't open your fingerprint security phone. Now, the same thing is applied here. Here, we know our data to be Apple. We are training our AI so that it can be able to detect Apple among the numerous fruits we have. We've given Apple data, goes through an algorithm, it processes, it trains itself. Now we are done. Our model is ready. For we to test our model, we need to give it a data. Now, when we give it an Apple data, it will be able to say, oh, this is an Apple or it's an Apple. When we give it multiple data to be able to say, okay, this is an Apple. It is actually looking for Apple because it is trained with a known data, Apple. Please, any question here. 
right now here are some of the algorithm the algorithm we will be looking at but not today so we have one polynomial regression we have random forest we have linear regression we have logistic regression we have decision trees one of my favorites we have k nearest neighbors and we have um naive base now um today we are not going to tackle the algorithm as it is a whole um topic on its own we are moving on to the next type of um, machine learning the first one is supervised the second one is unsupervised machine learning okay in supervised machine learning we learned that the data we are used we used in training that particular model is known here in in, in our case it's, it was an apple now in an unsupervised learning we are using unknown data so unknown data here we have a mix for fruits we have apple mango and a whole lot we are building the same ai now we give it to us to our model give it an algorithm now it start processing it it train itself and says okay i can see a pattern here the model will say i can see a pattern here what pattern does it see the pattern the model sees is that some of the fruits are the same kind some of the fruit are different so here what is trying to do on supervised learning is trying to do is it's trying to differentiate the multiple data we've given to it you see in the supervised data it was all apple so straightforward and learn it and every data you give is trying to find apple but here we've given it an unknown data we've not labeled anything so we have a mix of fruits apple coconut um, a whole lot we've given it to it we have we've applied an algorithm it has processed it now the model will tell us wait i'm seeing multiple patterns of apple here so here it will try to classify them or group them into into categories which are the same patterns so let's say these fruits are yellow to group the yellow to group the red to to group the green ones now it will try and study the characteristics or the features or the similar quantities or the similar qualities of each of the fruits and actually group them so when it takes mango you to know that okay so all these mango are of this shape apple are of this shape pineapple are of this shape and mostly they are of this color this color this color now it is being trained the next time we come we are coming to test it and see we are not bringing only apple we are bringing multiple fruits to it here it will be able to say fruit two four six is classified apple fruit 312 is classified banana fruit this is classified this so here you see that it is be, it, it will be able to draw patterns among unknown data every unknown data you give to it and be able to classify them please any question i'm going to buy again with the supervised learning we know our data our data we are giving it is apple right now we've trained it with an apple it takes it we give it a, a data it's able to detect apple the second one on supervised learning we are giving an unknown data so we are not saying whether it's apple banana or what they are combined they are mixed now it is the duty of the model to actually draw part in with with similar fruits or fruit with similar qualities and group them now when it does this when it's finished doing this it learns it or it's learned the way it do it things now finally it will be able to actually when you give it an unknown data again to actually categorize them into separate patterns you want so when you give them these clustered of full of fruits it will be able to say okay all these are classified as bananas as apple as this because of this character or because of these qualities which is found among them ladies and gentlemen that's the difference between 
supervised and unsupervised learning. Please, any questions so far? Right. Why is machine learning so important? Why? Someone will ask, why? Why is machine learning? Why do we even need to learn um, or yes, do machine learning? Machine learning is important in so many ways. Machine learning um, will help you to use your data, build models, and improve on some features now let's actually um go to what's here to better understand the question why is machine learning important what is machine learning actually now understand the uses of machine learning let's consider some things here consider some of the applications of machine learning so here are some of the applications of machine learning in fact self-driving cars they use machine learning in self-driving cars they've been fed with data in the way whereby when the car is moving and it sees a person or an individual it will be able to draw a pattern with the okay this object crossing me resembles a human being and so i should pause or i should break for the person to cross with the same model, it should be able to tell, oh, okay, this object crossing me is an animal, so I should be able to pause for it to cross. The same model, it should be able to see, okay, there's a traffic light and the red is on, meaning I should pause or I should break. That is one important of machine learning. It is used in this automation that, that the self-driving cars is used to train them. Now we have the cyber fraud detection. These anomalies in online transactions and so on and so forth. Machine learning helps in training data to detect anomalies in these um, um, transaction fraud that's happening daily on the internet. So that's cyber fraud detection. Now the next one is online recommendation engines. From as I said earlier, when we started from Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, and these tech giants, these, for example, the Netflix is one of the common ones, and for example, and even YouTube uses it when you when you when you most of times um watches some particular videos, you see the next time they will be giving your feed to be changing to your preference. They use these suggestions. So machine learning actually helps in all of these. And machine learning also help in ad content, in targeting customers, in reading customers. So we know these customers visit our website and always uses this certain part of, uh, of the page, meaning this page is far more important to the customers than other page. Therefore, what should the company do? Okay, let us improve upon this page so that we will keep the users on our page, irrespective of the page you or she visits on our website. Please, any question? So there is a diagram here. I will send the diagram to you in the Slack channel so that you take um, a very close look at it. It's actually um, showing the process involved in machine learning, the pre-processing, the learning, the error analysis, the prediction. In our next meeting, we are going to dive in to one of the algorithms, probably decision trees. Then we will dig into the machine learning process. Please, any question so far?
Right. If there are no questions, thank you for joining us to this course. I will send you um, the picture of the machine learning process so that you can view through. I also send a recording session you can go over. In our next meeting, we are going to dive in to machine learning algorithms. That's decision tree. We are going to learn how a decision tree actually is being used in learning our data. And I will also send you a link to download a data set for you to take a look at how a data set look like. Um, yes, how a data set look like. Thank you for joining today's class. We will meet again.